have the final of our three documentary his, uh, reviews of, well, works about the history of tabletop role-playing games with Eye of the Beholder, a documentary about the art of Dungeons & Dragons. In the interest of full disclosure, as with Secrets of Blackmore, this is a documentary I backed on Kickstarter. Well, I'm reviewing it anyway because I do feel that I am able to speak candidly about it and my thoughts about the work. Eye of the Beholder puts its primary focus on the artists and some of the art they made for Dungeons & Dragons, mainly for the game through the TSR years, covering the second and third editions of AD&D, along with the basic set, and a little bit of OD&D. Particular attention is paid to the big names of the second edition years. Artists like Larry Elmore, Dave Sutherland, Jeff Easley, Keith Parkinson, Gerald Brom, and Tony DeTorlisi, among others. We do get some asides to OD&D and first edition specific artists, ones who didn't carry over to doing additional stuff in a second edition. Artists like Darlene and Errol Otis, but much more of the focus is on the AD&D era, and to be fair, that's because there is a lot of art that TSR put out during that era. Now, we get discussion of specific pieces of art, like Keith Parkinson's Dragonlance painting, What Do You Mean We're Lost?, but a lot of the documentary is focused more on the profiles of the artists, their artistic processes, and the internal culture in TSR in the art department during this period. When we do get focus on particular pieces, we get some nice interviews from people outside of the artists who in turn discuss that piece's particular impact on them, both in terms of their emotional takeaways of the work, like for example, an extensive uh, discussion of Tr Dave Trampier's famous cover art for the AD&D First Edition Player's Handbook. Now, I will admit, I never had the Trampier cover. My First Edition Player's Handbook, which I had in middle school, was the Easley cover. I don't own that exact copy anymore. This is actually a nicer one. Um... The one I had is much more beat up and well-worn. well, well worn. Uh, But when I decided to rebuild my collection of the first edition stuff, I went out of my way to hunt down the Easley version. My monster, my DM guide and um, is also the Easley version, but I do have the original cover, Dave Sutherland, Monster Manual. Now, the back half of the documentary gets into how the art for D&D, particularly for 5th edition, has evolved over time and tried to get more inclusive both by scaling back some of the gratuitous cheesecake from earlier editions, as well as making sure people outside of just, you know, white dudes are represented in the game's art as well, and represented well, combined with some interviews with some of the artists for 5th edition D&D who give their thoughts on their process and how they interpret their art in the context for 5th edition and previous artwork while also showing their appreciation of the artwork from previous editions as well. As a documentary, this doesn't stand alone as well as I'd like. There are moments when we focus on particular paintings and other works and see the artists giving their thoughts on making them, uh, like with Darlene giving her thoughts on making the classic original Greyhawk map for the original World Greyhawk box set. And... Also seeing the other artists give the thoughts on the work as well as artists reacting to, um, well, the What Do You Mean We're Lost painting, which is a fantastic painting, and along with various um, gamers giving their thoughts on the work as what well, and various paintings and stuff that inspired them. I, I, I like that part a lot. I, it's, it's a thing I would like to see more of in the documentary if somebody ever did a fall if they if we got a follow up documentary um having taking more of a sister wendy esque approach where approaching them from a um art analysis I'm going to say criticism but art an art appreciation standpoint with uh role players and D, &D artists giving their thoughts on various pieces that they feel are iconic or I I iconic like like the Death of Sturm, like by uh, Larry Elmore, like the um, like 
well, um, some of the art for uh, even like some of the pieces of internal art, like um, some of the cartoons in the Dungeons and Dragons uh, first edition player's handbook and that sort of thing. That would have been like that. That would be a enjoyable documentary uh, as far as a follow up work. But I also do very much appreciate the look inside TSR, the working environment that these artists created these um, fantastic, in multiple senses of the term, um, creations in. And I like, and it's important to discuss like how the original pieces were spectacularly undervalued by management as TSR approached its end and why so many of these original pieces are potentially like have been potentially lost forever assuming somebody at the dumpster just didn't snap a cop grab a copy of a painting that they thought looked cool or that sort of thing and i strongly recommend if you enjoy this documentary or want more coming out of it picking up a copy of the art of arcana book which i have previously reviewed there will be a link to that previous review up in the corner and I'll have a link in the show notes. Both works combined do a great job presenting a full picture on its own. And both of them on their own are also good, but in isolation, there are bits that feel like they're missing and they make a much better whole than they do standing alone. I will have links to both of those works in question, um, both Eye of the Beholder and Art and Arcana, if you want to pick that up after having already gotten the documentary. In the doobly-doo, there'll be affiliate links. Buying anything through them helps support the show. So that's all of the RPG history stuff for this month. August of next year, we will turn to another series of works specifically related to role-playing games. Um, I have my copy of Game Wizards that I by Don Peterson I need to read, and there's another follow-up book that's come out Involved about um, TSR's history and the transition to Wizards of the Coast that I hopefully will have read by then. And I still need to review on this channel, The Elusive Shift. So well, depending on uh, how many Wednesdays we have in August of next year, we may have a, another j big um, helping of a hero's feast, if you will, of role-playing history for that, for then. Next month, we'll get back to the Nightfall, or next week, rather, we'll get back to the Nightfall Saga and the Tally Man. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, cost me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. <laughs>